Okay. It is in the process of going live. Here we go. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining in the live stream today. We have a very special guest with us, our very own bomber, Stephen Hunter. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, no worries. No worries at all, man. No problem at all. <laughs> Well, Stephen, uh, so I don't know if you realize this, but today, uh, here in the U.S. at least, it's the sixth anniversary of Battle of the Five Armies coming out. So this is oh, kind oh, of wow. kind of a good date for this. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. Yeah, sixth year. It was. I'm not too sure the exact date, but I remember yeah. being I remember being over in L.A. and um, going okay. to the premiere of that, and we stayed at the Roosevelt Hotel. Okay. And um, with some of the boys, and I remember going out the night before, and there were there were people camping out on the street. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you know we may have been in the bar beforehand <laughs> so so we just thought we'd go out and have a have a bit of a chat to them um yeah. and then then of course the next next day we all got dressed up and um yeah went to the premiere and uh, nice. i remember because my card forgot to pick me up um i was like <laughs> where's my car and they go oh it's waiting do you want it now i go well yeah because all the other guys had gone yeah and because i got late and i was in between andy circus and evangeline lily you know and they had all the press and you know, there's nothing more humbling when you, you know, you've got your <laughs> your handler with the sign with your name, and all these TV journalists are going. <laughs> so, but I must we don't say, need um, those journalists. We we're, exactly, yeah. The true the true Hobbit fans know what's up. I must, I must say, Radio China were particularly um, friendly, so uh, we had a big <laughs> chat with them. But uh, yeah, it was it was a good time, and I remember um, a friend of mine, Bob Brinley, who lives in Pasadena, and uh, I met him. In 2012, even before the first movie came out, I went out to stay with Graham McTavish for a while, and uh, and him and his friend Chris, uh, we met like on the train from the car park to Disneyland to the actual park yeah. in Disneyland, and they couldn't believe I was by myself, and I'm like, no way, you're in Disneyland by, by yourself, you know, come with us, we've been like 40 times. I'm like, okay, yeah. and so they essentially kidnapped me for the day, and um, nice, and we were there till midnight. Anyway, I, I got tickets last minute to the premiere. And so I called him and called another friend, Jeff, who's an old teacher of mine. And um, so he came along and uh, at the after party, he approached Chevy Chase and I'm I, clear <laughs> as day. And cause we were like, cause he's notoriously maybe a bit grumpy, you know, I've never yeah. really met him. And so he walked up to him and he's like, we just, you know, we just slowly back away. <laughs> and, uh, and so Bob goes, you take drugs, Danny? Chase looked at him and went, every day, sir, every day. And, <laughs> and he was like, yes. And we're like, dude, you could have been killed. Yeah, you weren't sure how that was going to go. <laughs> oh, totally not sure. Yeah, we, we guessed, but we were, we were wrong. So, yeah, no, I remember that fondly. And then we remember going to see the movie and we were like, what happened to us? Where were we? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we were in this. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, that's, you know. that's one of the reasons, uh, you know, I always pop in my extended editions is because there's so many good character moments, especially for the dwarves, I feel like. And yeah, um, Bomber in particular, um, you know, he has some really great moments in the theatrical cuts. Um, but yeah, like you said, Battle of Five Armies, they, they kind of take a back seat, it seems like. Um, mm. So yeah. Uh, I'm curious. It reminds, me, it reminds me of that cowbell sketch from Saturday Night Live, the Christopher Walken. <laughs> you know, where the Need Warner's more dwarves. guys. No, well, the Warner's guys have got a fever, and the only subscription prescription is more elves, and they just keep <laughs> adding elves to it. We're like, more, what? more love triangle. <laughs> well, yeah, because they we had a little bit of fighting, and then they went back to the elves and Thorin. Yeah. And like, oh, they'll, they'll come back to us. They'll come back to us. They'll come. Huh, that's it. That was the end. So it was yeah. a bit of a surprise. I will say, so one of my... Uh, one of my favorite bomber moments is in the extended cut of Desolation of Smaug when you guys are at Bayorns and mm. Gandalf is telling everybody to come out two at a time. And he mm. looks at Bomber and says, you count as two, come out by yourself. And Bomber, I, your look there just gets me every time because you're just like, yeah, that makes sense. OK. <laughs> well, yeah, because it was I think in the in the. Um... In the book, I remember, and even in the script, it was, I remember in the book particularly, it sort of was like, you know, he was upset that he's always last. Yeah. But I, I thought, I was like, yeah, fair call. You know, I, to me, that was my choice because I was like, oh, yeah. And it was yeah. just in keeping with it. I can't remember my decision at that time. But yeah. But I, I, obviously, all my stuff, um, yeah, and as you say, a lot of it got cut out of the, um, you know, theatrical. The, yeah. the theatrical version. But it was all, you know, um, 
it was a challenge. It was a really good challenge as an actor because I didn't have words and it was all right. just point, point of view and just, yeah. you know, expressions. And yeah, so the, the, it's great you say that because people, if people can get what you're doing, they can get your character without words. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a real compliment. So thanks. And yeah, yeah. that was, I, I enjoyed it. And, and, and I think the other thing, because he was so massive, I just, yeah. I didn't try to do too much. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, you get maybe, well, one man shall rename nameless but you know you could either flail around and try to look in the camera you know yeah. um and you can do that or you can try different things or mm -hmm. you know with words etc but yeah um for me i was like well he's just he's a massive unit and i don't have to do too much and it's really just being truthful and and i, yeah. I guess i was always taught um i studied uh, meisner you know sanford meisner technique and it was always just do something always have a point of view mm -hmm. always do something and it doesn't have to be a lot, but just actively do something. And that just keeps you alive and seen yeah. because it might swing to you or it might not. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so what is, you know, speaking of favorite bomber moments. So what's, what's your favorite moment from the films for bomber? Oh, look, there's so many, um, you know, I think the moments with, uh, with Jimmy were, were mm -hmm. quite good. There was a little particular moment, the trolls and I went, I went to go at, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's only goes, oh, you've had, you've had too much, you know, yeah. and, and he puts it down. And I think the running scene particular, that was that was a pretty crazy day. Yeah. Um, and it was one of those moments as an actor where no one tells you, look, hey, you're gonna be sprinting like mm -hmm. in three days. You just have to look at the script and you just have to be prepared for anything. And I think yeah. if anything, particularly that job taught me as you know, just as a person, you just, you have to, I mean, I'm hardly peak physical condition, but I'm like, I'm, I'm reasonably fit. I'm, You're not I'm bomber early. size. Yeah. No, but you know, I'm in, my <laughs> early, I'm in my early fifties and I'm pretty flexible and I can run and, you know, yeah. I, can, I can get around. So, and that was like, I just had to keep training and be prepared because, you know, you just turn up and we did a little run down the hill and then it was the big scene. And then they set up this big, um, uh, like a, a, like a little truck or a little buggy with the camera on it that was going to go alongside and they go you know and we sort of set it up and i was like okay so you know steve you're gonna run and blah 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 and i'm like okay um then i was like to the camera guys can you see my feet because we had these massive boots right yeah um and even you know even our like our, our sort of stunt boots or outside boots were still pretty massive and they're like, um, no, no, we can't see your feet. And I'm like, I said to the costume team, I said, can you rip up and grab my, my runners? Um, so they did. <laughs> and we got there just in time, got changes, and I'm just getting changed in my running shoes. And uh, just as well, because we only did three takes, but Pete was like, yeah, yeah, so, uh, so uh, uh, this, this scene, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's life or death. So, um, you know, you're running from Bayonne and he's a, he's a big bear. So if he catches you, probably rip you apart. And uh, so, you know, I, I want you guys to run pretty fast, um, uh, you know, and, and don't don't pretend to run. You know, you got to actually run fast. Otherwise, it's going to look silly. So, uh, you know, re really, really go for it. Go as fast as you can. And, uh, and Stephen, uh, you, uh, uh, you, uh, you just go faster. Action. And that's literally how it went. <laughs> and I remember just going and I just fanged it. And I did yeah. three, and everyone, everyone was like, "Whoa!" Because you know, I'm sure a lot of guys are like this fat guy's not going to be able to run. I've seen, him, <laughs> I've, I've seen him at catering. There's no way he's going to he's going to out sprint these guys. <laughs> so, but you know, it, it was it, it did. did. And I, yeah. yeah, and 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 that was a it was one of those moments that if I wasn't prepared and if I wasn't yeah. fit and if I wasn't you know like I could have bung you know knee or hamstring or whatever because we did a lot of physical stuff. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't ready, then that moment wouldn't have been as it was. They would have been a stunt guy and it wouldn't have been a close up. And so it's really about taking those little moments. And I think the movie in total was that because they wrote to me very early on and said, look, we, don't, we know I had some lines. Bomber had a few more lines in the original mm -hmm. script. Okay. And they said, look, we're, we're, we're actually looking at, at making it more physical, you know, mm -hmm. which means we'll take the lines out, but you know, that gives Pete license yeah, to create action. stuff. And my, yeah. yeah, my agent was like, at the time, she was like, oh, I don't know, you know, this is your big moment. I said, look, yeah, but this is going to give me a point of difference. Mm -hmm. I could fight for five or six lines with the other guys or I could do this. And thankfully, myself and um, and also William Kirch, who played um, before, you know, we had that opportunity to, to do some physical stuff. So, yeah. you know, and that, that moment and the other obviously iconic moment was in the barrels, which yes. was, <laughs> that was mostly digital, right? But, CG, right. But, yeah, but but that was that was all. Uh, I saw a previs of that really early on. I mean, that yeah. was Pete's Pete wanted that really early on, and that was actually going to be 
in the second movie, I think. Uh, mm. Or the first movie. Back when it was going to be two. Yeah, I think it might have been at the end of the first movie. I think. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I'm not too sure. I yeah, remember, I think. But I think I don't know if it's been confirmed, but I I've always assumed that shortly after the barrel sequence was when the original first film would have ended when it was going to be two. I think so. And, you know, we only found out on the day of the rap party. We had, we had, oh, a, big really? rap, we had a big rap party at the TSB Stadium in Wellington, which is this big stadium they play. They have a lot of, um, you know, concerts there and big sports games and basketball games and stuff like that. And that was where our rap party was. And that day we had a meeting going, oh, yeah, you know these two movies doing? Yeah, well, actually there's going to be three now, <laughs> uh, which we kind of right. suspected. We suspected, but it wasn't a surprise because we shot so much stuff. Oh, there was yeah. so much stuff to tell. And, you know, the age old thing of, hey, it's a small book and you've got three movies, what the, you know, but there was so much more written, mm-hmm. as you probably know, yeah. and all the appendices and oh, yeah. they filled the gaps or something like, you know, and then Gandalf sort of buggers off somewhere and does something, you know, mm-hmm. and it doesn't actually go into specifics. So they right. get to cover that or a battle ensues. And then that's like yeah. 20 minutes. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot more. Yeah. The, the argument that, one book turned into three movies it's it doesn't hold water with anyone who uh really knows their tolkien i would say yeah um, and and apparently i actually found out from um a surprise like tolkien fanatic stephen colby he, he was mm-hmm. in wellington and he came over um and then they they did this had this competition I don't know, oh yeah you, you know this i've yeah, heard this, this yeah. yeah yeah and it was with philippa boyens who uh-huh. was the Tolkien expert right and and Stephen Colby versus and the quiz master was uh Stephen Fry mm, okay and they were asking all these questions and Stephen Colby just wiped the floor with it like really absolutely yeah and he, he was a and he's the one that that said look you know he was before he died he was about to rewrite the Hobbit and he was about to expand it you know oh, um okay. because it was you know yeah. it was written in, in the 30s and, oh yeah and and so it was a essentially a children's book and he he basically wrote a lot more later you know when he when he created mm-hmm. lord of the rings so yeah that, that was uh it was always going to be a lot bigger so yeah. you know the small book is really just a starter and yeah. uh, and I'm, I'm glad we got to to tell a lot more of that and yeah obviously there's a lot more that didn't make it oh know, yeah into the extended edition so yeah well that was actually that leads me into one of my other questions is there are there any scenes that you can remember filming that didn't end up in the extended editions um yeah yeah like I, there's so much there's the, i guess an extension like bag end could have been a whole movie you know like mm. the food fight could have been a whole movie you know <laughs> we were in there for maybe three weeks in, in main unit and then another two or three weeks with andy circus yeah. um you know at one stage i was crawling over the table eating a big ham and you know <laughs> um one particular moment mctavish grabbed me and just started oh that and then they said, cut. And he goes, well, you made a meal of that. He said, why don't you just go with it? I said, what do you mean? He said, I was trying to stick a, a tomato in your mouth. I said, no, you weren't. You're trying to stick it up my nostril. <laughs> That's why I was resisting. He goes, oh, sorry. <laughs> so it was all that kind of stuff. Um, and at one, one stage, a little, little bit under my, you know, just the top of my chin, I thought I'd, I thought I'd swallowed like, with all the, all the food eating. Yeah. Um, so th- there was a lot of stuff there. Um, you know, and there was a lot of stuff we did, you know, off the cuff too. I remember there was one thing we particularly wanted to film, and I, I don't even know where a copy is, but it was like this really um, low key scene in um, in the inside the Lonely Mountain um, between Dwalin and Bomba, and it was basically Dwalin's unrequited love for Bomba, and um, <laughs> we filmed that. <laughs> we filmed that. <laughs> Uh, just you know on rap one day and uh yeah i don't even i don't know where it is but it was pretty funny and again it was just all i was just you know bomber was deeply uncomfortable with the whole whole thing yeah um while dwellen was confessing his love um i'm sure it's in peter's archive somewhere maybe like i know um i know michael who did all the behind the scenes has got a copy of it so yeah i'd, I'd, I'd really love to get a copy of that one day Maybe we'll uh, get that in the uh, collector's edition 4K this summer. <laughs> yeah, look, maybe. Uh, that, that was interesting. I, I, I watched that um, the little clip, the, and I, I reposted it, the little clip on YouTube. And, um, you know, basically how he said that he hasn't changed yet. He hasn't put new effects in The Lord of the Rings, but, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the way um, things have altered, that it all looks the same. And obviously, the grading's the same, and he's, he's managed to tidy up. 
yeah. fix up some of these the effects. So it'd be really interesting to see. And I think that was always always the intention, you know, once he took the reins again from mm-hmm. uh, Guillermo. Because if Guillermo had done The Hobbit, it would have been a totally different look and feel. Mm-hmm. So it's, I thought it was kind of fitting that he got to finish it and he's got those six movies. Yeah. Um, and, you know, now, from what he was saying, um, you know, uh, I guess technically and aesthetically that they can all look the same with all these mm-hmm. adjustments. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be pretty special. I mean, aside from that, I don't know what, I, I mean, there was so much we filmed and like, yeah. I, and there's a blur between what we actually filmed, what was in the script and just all the stuff that we were just mucking around. Right. So many food fights, so many, <laughs> because you, you've got to understand these, there was 13 of us, um, 13 dwarves, Bilbo, um, you know, Martin Freeman and Ian McKellen. Mm-hmm. And we used to go to Martin's. We used to go to Ian's place for lunch quite often. He'd put on lunches on a Sunday sometimes for certain things that guests were in town or whatever. Um, so we basically hung around the whole time, and there was just so much fun and games yeah. offset. Because especially for us, the dwarves, you know, apart, aside from you know Thorin and I guess Graham as well, um, Dwalin and, and and Ken who played Bowen, um, a lot of times we were just waiting to go on, and then we'd do our one little bit, and then we'd be would be off but we'd be yeah. in prosthetics for all day yeah. in the trailer park drinking coffee playing play i got given a playstation for christmas and um <laughs> the only game i was interested in was fifa so we we had a big competition between myself and aiden turner and dino gorman um <laughs> playing playing fifa so that's what we did and you know so there was a lot of yeah it, it was a really interesting you know uh fun time just yeah. boys and you know <laughs> in that situation boys men use inverted commas resort to <laughs> childlike tendencies and it was certainly at that most of the time yeah um, I, st- I still get we still get messages we share messages mainly with um i guess with with graham and, and adam um you know or if one of the other guys are doing something we'll poke fun at it and send it to each other and, yeah um, i mean example um mark adler who we you know deeply love who's just such an amazing man but he's he's in, actually in the new zealand navy and he posts photos of him in a navy uniform and we always found that hilarious and we always used to make up stories that he was actually never in the navy he'd yeah. just do it because he loves dressing <laughs> up and he, he and he'd be deeply offended by that um so of course we kept saying it um because that's how practical jokes work yeah. and um so yeah it was one of that the other day he posted on instagram right i sort of did a screenshot and sent it to graham yeah all that all that sort of stuff uh, you know just carries on yeah so i was actually i was watching some of the special features on uh one of the mm. hobbit films and during one of his interviews he's in uh he's in bag end but he has the uniform on and it talked mm. about you guys giving him a hard time about that yeah and i think i think i might have gone to graham and graham was was um was actually mentioning the fact that he's not actually in the navy. And he's yeah, like, the dress up <laughs> costumes and yeah, there was a lot of that. There was a lot of that going on. Um, yeah, very school like, you know. And yeah. you'd always there'd be one person that gets picked on, and Mark happened to be that person. He'd also get picked on by Pete, but in a different way because he's he's done a lot of movies with Pete, and he, he also recently did um, Mortal Engines, which um, mm-hmm. yeah. Pete Pete uh, didn't direct but produced. In fact, the role that he went for it was like an auctioneer role. Can't remember what the guy's name was, um, but I auditioned for the same thing. And when I was auditioning for it, I did a self tape in Sydney and sent it over to Liz Mullane, the casting director. When I was auditioning, I was like, "This is Hadlow. Hadlow, Hadlow's going to get this." And he, and he did. It was he was perfect for it. So, um, but Pete used to tease him all the time. There was one time at the caves, um, the Goblin Caves, where he sent Kieran Shah, who was actually Frodo's double in the original okay. trilogy. Yeah. Um, he was dressed up as a dwarf and he basically sent him out to hump his leg. Um, Pete did that to, to Mark. So there was all that kind of stuff used to go on. Yeah. But there, but there was a deep respect with Mark and, and, and Pete. Um, and, you know, Mark was being very loyal to Pete and, you know, he's, he's worked with him a lot. So he probably feels he can sort of give him a little bit extra. Mess, messing around with him. Yeah. 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 Um, so you mentioned uh, the scenes in Bag End where you guys have the food fights and stuff. Mm. Um, I got a question. One of my Patreon supporters, uh, Live Long mm. with Force, um, mm. asks, how much did you actually have to eat on set? And I'm going to tack on a sub question to this. Um, mm. The scene where the shot where uh, Bomber catches the food in his mouth, how many takes mm. did that take? 
that took about three or four takes. And that was yeah. that was Jimmy Nesbitt throwing an egg from the other side of the table. Yeah. And the beauty of that, because it was only take three or four, all the reactions were, that was real reactions from, from, the, <laughs> from the guys. And people were like, is that CG? Did that take like 20? Someone, I saw someone writing, it was like 20 takes. I said, no, it was three or four takes. It was, wow. it was, pretty, it was pretty quick, but there was a lot of food. <clears throat> and of course, the rookie mistake was when I was eating the eggs. <clears throat> and I thought, I'll eat some eggs, but I was working with Andy Circus and, of course, little did I know we, you know, we did a lot of takes with, with both with all directors. Mm-hmm. Um, and once you start something, you've just got to keep doing it. So I, I must have eaten like nine or ten eggs, and oh my you know, there was all the cakes and <laughs> yeah. stuff. But I, I learned to take little bites, yeah. you know, because you, you've got to match your action with those kinds mm-hmm. of things. You've got to kind of match it. So I, I'll work out a bit of that, a bit of that, and then I'll grab that and take some of that. So mm-hmm. I tried to keep it simple. Um, the egg thing I just completely blew because. You know, I was like, oh, man, i just got to keep doing it. Um, <laughs> the cool hand look moment. So there was a lot of eating and bag end and the yeah. eggs especially. Um, the person I felt the most sorry for was Danelle, who was my um, makeup hair and makeup person, mm. um, you know, and uh, she just had to, the big strangler, which detached, it was basically tied on, had little hooks. Okay. Um, so she had to wash that and she had to wash cake oh and gosh, chicken yeah. and egg and ham and all <laughs> kinds of stuff on it. So, uh, yeah. Cause as dwarves, you're not that concerned about, you know, eating, mm. you know, politely or, you know, being tidy when you eat, I guess. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So that's, you know, that's, that's one of the stories. And it, I think it's probably one I brought up because you mentioned Patreon and I've got my, um, yeah. Steven. So let's, let's go ahead and, uh, talk about that. I had that, mm. uh, um, I want to make sure we cover that. Um, mm. So, Stephen, you've recently launched your own Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Stephen Hunter. Um, mm. so, tell, so tell the audience here a bit about what you're doing on Patreon. And I know you're also on uh, Jemmy and Cameo as well, but let's focus on Patreon first. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I, I sort of I looked into it a few years ago and um, a couple of years ago. And initially I was a little bit hesitant about, you know, I'm an actor and people know I've been in these massive movies and, you know, I don't get rich from those, but it's like, you know, asking for money for that kind of stuff. And I, I was, I was a little bit hesitant. And then I thought, well, I'm not actually traveling to um, conventions anymore. And I was going to do create more things. I was going to do like, you know, comedy podcasts and sketches and mm-hmm. stuff. And then, then I decided to really refine it to just to make it a fan experience. And I thought, well, people go to conventions, they spend money, they, they buy autographs and they do mm-hmm. that. So I guess my intention with my Patreon is just to recreate a little, you know, convention experience. And sure, it's just me, you know, you don't get all the others. Um, so that's really what I've concentrated on. So I do, I've got a podcast called There Was This One Time in Dwarf Camp where people yeah. can ask questions. They send in questions and I'll answer them in the podcast. Uh, we do a live Zoom. Um, I decided to, do, we're doing a QA and a where they people type. I thought, let's just do a Zoom because yeah. everyone's doing it now, especially during COVID. And I've, I've kept that going. Um, if they join up, I'll, I'll send them like a little autograph photo like that, little, mm-hmm. just a little one like that. Um, you know, do a little video message and stuff like that. So, so that's ongoing because people generally stay for a, a few months. Um, so I, I think that's the, that's the best way for people to get involved. Um, yeah. and, and I'm always looking, how can I, especially with the fact that the, you know, the likelihood of convergence happening in the next sort of, you know, six to eight months to right. a year is unlikely. How could I expand that? And I was looking at getting the, the other guys involved, but it's mm-hmm. kind of hard with a Patreon page. You know, I put all the work in and to divvy it up, but, yeah. um, but then Jimmy came along um, and just offered this thing where we can actually do like an event, like a, a live one-off event. Here's the date. Mm. You pay a certain amount to be involved. And it's kind of like a little mini convention. So yeah. that's that, so that's kind of a way that um, the other guys could possibly get involved. And also I, I can, you know, do autographs and yeah. stuff like that on, on uh, you know, through Jimmy. So it's a good little portal. It's only very new. Um, and of course, you know, the cameo has been really, really busy, and that basically looks after itself. It's such a big platform that's right. specifically video messages. Um, I also just hooked up with another bunch in the UK called Thrills, and that's just a UK bunch one. So it's, it's okay. trying to, to get there. So, I mean, it's all designed to try and, you know, create that fan experience, right? Without having to go to the shows yeah. or because people can't go to them. And right. sure, it's it's a very, very micro version of it. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's essentially what it is. And mm-hmm. and the thing I love about the, the cameo thing is, if you don't front up, if you don't do it, people will just they'll just go, you know. Which is I, I think it's a, I think it's a very good model mm-hmm. for that kind of subscription based thing. So yeah, right. and, and it keeps me busy, you know. Yeah, it keeps me on my toes. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's great. I mean, like you said, conventions are, uh, you know, not happening right now, obviously, and um, mm. 
you know, I, I live in the Midwest of the United States, so there's not exactly a lot of conventions <laughs> near mm. me. You know, we've got like New York and LA are like the big ones. Mm. So like, you know, I, gosh, I haven't, uh, I've been to one in Chicago a few years ago and mm. that's about it. I, I, I did Dragon Con a few years ago with Dean and, um, Pete Hamilton and Sylvester McCoy, which is, which is fun. Um, in Atlanta, you know, but yeah, those massive events are just, they're just not happening at the moment. Right. So we actually did a virtual Dragon Con. Um, so right. we did like, yeah. a, we did on Dragon Con TV. So it was like a few of us um, chatting away, which was, it, it was, it was good, but you know, it was, it, it was, it was quite new and it's, it's mm -hmm. like a totally different, smaller experience. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. And you just had, uh, so I, I joined your Patreon a while back. So yeah. again, if you guys missed the, the link earlier, patreon.com slash Stephen Hunter, you should go check it out. Open a new tab, check it out. Um, you just did a, a Christmas zoom actually. So, um, you had some nice festive green antlers on and everything. And, uh, yeah. it was really cool. We just, um, you know, the group just kind of chatted, uh, you know, for 40 minutes or so. And mm -hmm. we got some, uh, you know, just like in the stream today, we get some, uh, cool behind the scenes Hobbit insight that I had never heard before. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've watched all the appendices and everything. And so, you know, the, the fact that this huge production, you know, there's so much that went into these movies, you know, there's mm -hmm. still, stories that we haven't heard as fans it's pretty cool yeah and there was three new guys which which also says to me that i should i should uh, post on my social media platforms um do video posts more often because i did mm. a video post and suddenly i got a whole lot of new patrons so yeah. i just i need to i need to keep that up but um yeah it's good and like sometimes i'll ask questions or some of the guys have been there for ages we'll just talk about what we're doing for the holidays or talk about covid or talk about whatever and um i just make myself available for 40 minutes you know mm -hmm. um and uh yeah it's it's usually pretty low-key pretty fun um yeah and we have a good time and I, I think i opened that one up to sort of all patrons you know i think we had a bit we had, had a few on had a bit more than usual but uh yeah i thought that was a nice thing to do and i still had to get a um my podcast recorded before before the yeah. end of the year as well so that'll be that'll be coming out Very cool. lots of questions for that yeah um so um i know we we're getting close on time here so uh just a couple more quick questions and we'll let you go. Um, we had, uh, another, uh, Patreon question. Do people recognize you as bomber or did the costume and prosthetics hide you well? Um, look, I get recognized only, um, probably, yeah, probably only by people who really know the movies. Cause you know, you, you, all the press stuff, there's usually a photo bomber photo of me. Right. So people know it, but I guess the beauty is I'm not, universally recognized because they can't tell it's me underneath that right. but every now and then like at a, you know when we used to travel in airports but at an airport or at a bus station or a train station in sydney every few months there'll be one person comes up and go oh wow you know can i have a photo and it's like yeah sure yeah. you know so it's kind of nice but it's not like a it's not like i can't go out in public it, you know most right. people have no idea what i do so yeah um so we we have another question um this one yeah. from simon cooper um, he asks, um, um, he asks about Bomber's lines. He said, you know, he mentioned there's only one line in the movies yeah. um, in Battle of Five Armies, which you mentioned on your recent Christmas stream that that was actually a pickup. Am I, am I correct? Yeah, well, because it, it was, it was, I guess, agreed very early on that I wasn't going to have any lines, which I was, I was totally fine with. And then everyone was like, oh, do you wish you had something to say? And I'm like, oh, maybe. But then towards the end, I was like, no, I, I'd rather not say anything. I, I, mm -hmm. I like the fact that he, he's silent and people get the character without the dialogue. Um, and then we went back. Uh, so we were shooting 2011 from about, well, it was meant to be January or February, but it got delayed because Pete, Pete was ill. So we didn't start till March. Um, and then we shot all that year and then... Yeah, we did two blocks in 2011. Then we came back in 2012 and finished about August. And then we came back, I think it was May uh, 2013, uh, to do pickups. And it was meant to be five weeks of pickups when it was two movies, but that mm -hmm. turned into 10 weeks of pickups, yeah. which is longer than most normal film shoots. Right. Like a lot of feature films are sort of six to six to eight weeks. Wow. Um, so that was a long time for pickups. Um, yeah, and then... It was on the very my very last day, not the last day of pickups. I think I finished a couple of days early, but my last day on set. It was doing that battle scene with um, William losing his axe mm -hmm. uh, with with myself and Jimmy. Yeah, um, I love it. Yeah, and 
And that, oh, I don't even know if Jimmy was, was that Jimmy? Or, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, he was actually there, it was a stunt guy, but. Um, oh, gotcha. <laughs> no, no, I think, I think it was him. And then, so that, that's, that's the scene that we did. Um, and at lunchtime on that day, they go, oh, look, here's your lines. So it was lunchtime on my very, very last day of pickups that I got, I got my line. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so and 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 it ended up in the, in the 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 and I was kind of like oh yeah it's good thanks but I, I wasn't really you know if it was a year before maybe it would have been oh great I got my line but where I'm like right. yeah I was kind of happy I was kind of at peace with the fact that I didn't have any lines so um yeah and then we did it and then that was the end and it was quite emotional because that was like the that was the end of like a year and a half journey and yeah I, I just think you know leaving all that behind and you know, we had these trailers and being with the boys every day. And yeah, it was, it was quite a, um, I mean, anyone who's done any shows or, you know, you know, stage shows or, you know, local theater or anything, it just, you just, it's, it's such a high. And then when it's over, it, it really feels like a loss. And mm. to have two years of this, you know, the come down was quite, uh, it was quite solid and it was the same for a lot of the guys, actually. It, it took a while to, to really reset after that. Wow. But <clears throat> excuse me on uh, one of the things I, I love about, you know, both the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, it seems like, mm. you know, you didn't know each other, you know, most of you didn't know each other before this. And it's kind of led to, you know, longer f- friendship, you know, you've gained something from the shared experience. Um, but yeah, I can imagine it, it would be. Mm. Uh, being basically your entire life for two years. So it'd be yeah. quite the transition. Yeah, and, and people ask what's the best thing about the job, and and honestly, it is. It, it's it's those relationships that we we had, and you know, I keep in touch with Adam and Graham quite a bit. <clears throat> I've caught up with Jimmy in the UK um, and Dean. Um, uh, well, he's gone into a bit of hibernation. He's he's got a farm and he's a photographer. Um, but you know, Mark and um, Jed came over last year to, to promote their short film Blue Moon. Mm. And I hadn't seen them for ages. And it was just a really last minute thing. And I said, hey, let me know. I'll come and pick you up. And usually what I do, I'm, we're in the, in the um, just the, just over the bridge in Sydney, which actually so happens is, is apparently further north here has just become a hotspot. So we've had our first cases in a long time of COVID. But um, um, yeah, they arrived. And I said, look, I'll, I'll take you to the, around the eastern suburbs, which is Bondi and Coogee and all those beaches. And I used to live there. And that's my go-to. I, I pick, I take them for a drive, and we do a bit of a tour. So mm-hmm. I picked these two up, and and I just took them out for the afternoon, and and it was honestly, it was just like it was yesterday that we've yeah. been together because we we just know, we know each other so well, and that they are literally brothers, you know. All, all those guys are like brothers when we when we catch up, and some I keep in touch with more often, and like you know, I don't talk to Jimmy a lot. He's you know, Jimmy does his thing in the UK, but when we catch up, it's just it's just exactly the same, and you know, they are lifelong friendships. Um, and I, yeah, I really miss them. And, and when we catch up, it's one of those, well, we went to Wellington a couple of years ago and we went to one of the restaurants that we used to go to. It was Graham's birthday, actually. And it was myself, Graham, um, also uh, Duncan, who he uh, worked with on Outlander um, and, and Jed. And yeah, we went out for dinner and it was just like, it was just like old times. It was fantastic, but I just didn't want the night to end, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I think that that was certainly the best thing from the whole, from the whole experience. Very cool. Um, well, I'll ask, <clears throat> excuse me, just one more question. Um, so yeah, I actually, sure, uh, I've got plenty of time. So I, I, I dove into, um, this, you know, this wonderful, uh, Hobbit Chronicles set. I don't know mm. if you've ever seen these before, but, um, they're kind of behind the scenes, um, book series that they put out mm. around the time the movies were coming out by uh daniel falconer um no daniel very well he's yeah. a, he's a he's a he's a he's a wonderful man and uh he's actually he just recently sent me the hobbit board game right um, it's yeah. called an, an unexpected visit i think i, I think that's unexpected part Party. unexpected party yeah yeah um and he, he sent me he sent me most of those books too yeah so um yeah we've got all those i love going through that yeah. with my daughter yeah, I, I was reading through these. This was months ago, and it, it mm. I actually it kind of led me to make I did a whole video series on the dwarves of Erebor of Thorin's company. Yeah. Um, mm. because I just loved all the details in here um mm. from you guys, from all the actors, um mm. talking about the relationships between the different dwarves and 
things that you know might be there kind of in the background in the film but yeah. you know it's it's not you know it doesn't doesn't hit you as hard if you're just casually watching the films i think um it's easy to miss some of these things like uh um <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> um like biffer bofer and bomber aren't directly related to thorin so mm. they're a little separated from the rest of the group and how mm. You know, Bofer kind of looks after Bomber, like with the moment where he smacks his hand when he's trying to get more mm. food and you've had enough. Um, are there any, you know, particular parts of Bomber's character um, <clears throat> that you feel like, you know, people might have missed in the movies that that you would say like, hey, this is kind of a cool thing about Bomber? Yeah, I, I, there's probably a lot because, you know, as an acting thing. And I just, you know, the other thing I do on Patreon, I've got um, another page called the actor's coach. So I'm actually an acting teacher and acting coach and I do lessons and stuff like that. So, you know, and one of the things we talk about often is creating a world for your character. And when you're doing a scene or, you know, you're doing a TV show or, or play, like you can't act everything, but it, it gives you a rich life. And there are certain things that if you say, then you go, Oh yeah, yeah I, I could see that. But um a lot of times it just helps you get into character. Like I think for Bomber, <clears throat> I mean, do you guys have Bogans? You know what a Bogan is? Kind of like a redneck Bogans is kind of like um, Bogans in, in New Zealand and Australia are basically the guys in black T-shirts with mullets. You know, oh, okay. Yeah. Beer drinking, drive fast cars, okay. boy races yeah, yeah. sort of. Yeah. I'm a bogan. I'm, I'm a bogan. I was I was brought <laughs> up. I was brought up in, in a part of Wellington that was bogan. I was I went to school in the Waikato and bogan. I got my black. I, all my t-shirts are black. So yeah. you know I'm 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 uh, there's a lot of bogan. And I kind of thought that these guys were the bogans. You know, like they'd <clears throat> if the party these guys the other guys the kind of the royalty. You know, and they'd have a party. And we'd turn up, like it might be fine <laughs> wines and fine food. We'd turn up with just like a slab of beer and start a fist fight. You know, that, right. that's kind of where we're at. Very uncouth. <laughs> we're kind of uncouth and we don't care. We don't care. So yeah. I guess that was that was our sort of way. But at the same time, it's like there's a phrase on stage where they talk about balancing the stage. Like the one person's there and you're here, you, you, you try and sort of mirror the mm -hmm. opposite of where they are. Um, okay. And with an ensemble, the thing I found, it, we're trying to find our place. And, yeah. you know, uh, Deed and Aiden were like the young guys. You know, I always called them Brandon and Dylan um, from 90210. So, <laughs> and then Adam was, again, he was quite young. And I, I was kind of, I thought Bomber was kind of in that. Because at one stage they wanted him to be real big and cocky. But I just thought, no, he's a younger guy, you know. Um, so, but it was different. I think he was sort of i don't think he was nervous like ori ori was nervous mm -hmm. um you know fairly keely sort of had the weight of responsibility as the, the, the leadership on them i think i was respectful i think bomber was kind of respectful but he, you know he knew his place mm -hmm. but at the same time i don't think he was overawed or nerves or nervous by all the royalty he did probably didn't get it yeah um, <laughs> and I, I remember him back in making a choice that whenever thorin was talking i'd be like you know, listening because it's respectful to listen and, mm -hmm. you know, and then, but, you know, and it was really important, but not quite as important as, as the food that I had <laughs> in front of me. And that's so I, I kept eating. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and that's awesome. Yeah. And so when you give yourself a really solid point of view in those moments, when you get to any situation, you know, you've got a basis for how you would behave. Like when we got to the door mm -hmm. at, um, I was kind of, Bit further up and I remember the door opened and I was just like I sort of stood back and just let the others go past because I knew that it meant more to them that was had greater significance to them the Lonely Mountain so I, I kind of waited and that that just felt like the right thing to do so mm -hmm. you know when you create a world about and I think point of view is such a, a massive thing what's my point of view about all the other characters what's a point of view about myself what's a point of view about what we're experiencing and then you just act consistent with that so yeah, that, that's kind of that, that's kind of where a lot of it was at, and those little things, as you say, you can't really notice, but it gives it just gives your characters nuances, and I think most importantly, you know, you're just not standing there in the background because most right. of the time, we were kind of featured extras, like we were just like, okay, we're in the background, we go from there to there. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> there was a moment in Bag End, I remember, I had to walk with a plate of food, <clears throat> and 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 um, William was just like standing in one of the sort of dazes 
And I went to offer, and I thought, I'll just stop and offer her some food. And then he was, no, and then I just sort of gave him a pat on the shoulder and just kept going. And that that just signified the relationship that we had. He was like an old, crazy uncle that I was, that I really cared <laughs> for him, you know. And it was it was such a simple thing. Um, but it just kept, it just kept stuff alive, you know. Um, yeah. So I was just always doing something, always listening, even if what I was doing was listening. Yeah. You know, or just suddenly I was distracted by food. I just, I, I made sure, and without trying to, Pull focus, um, right? Yeah, you know, like pull focus away. Mm-hmm. But sometimes the character did anyway, like just the way yeah. he looked. So yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, so what the the blocks of cheese that you mm. you carry and bag in were those real mm. blocks of cheese or were those like all the food? Rough? All the food was all real. All the food really? was yeah. So you know, sometimes I had to go. Oh, like, don't eat that chicken. That's been like there since yesterday. You know. So, <laughs> but usually they they prepare. Obviously, if we're eating, they'll make sure all the food's fresh. But you right. know, the props the props guys were just you know enormous. The, the amount of preparation that they had uh-huh. to do, and then they had to reset it. And but you know, a lot of the continuity things. I like I always believe as an actor. You know, we had um, Victoria, who was um, she was the script supervisor, which is basically continuity. You know, from a script point of view, from camera angles point of view, and all that kind of stuff. But also what we're wearing, what we're doing. But I I always think as an actor, you know, you need to be on top of your own continuity. You need to know, especially with your actions, what you're doing. You look at someone like Al Pacino, and he just does. He's got so many actions because he's like, and I'm kind of the same. Like I'm not like Al Pacino, but I, I like to be doing something. But yeah. if you're going to do something, you've got to be able to match it. You've got to yeah. do the same thing the next time around. Right. Um, and I guess I've got quite a, I've got an extensive like TVC, like commercial background. And a lot of that is is pretty much just action and doing the same kind mm-hmm. of thing. So, you know, many times on set, it just felt like I was just doing a commercial every day, which didn't yeah. involve a lot of acting so much. Um, and for me in the background, it was just, all my job was to do the same thing, keep it really consistent. Then, if there was a, if I was in the background and say Martin was it was a shot on Martin and that was the scene, he would offer up a lot of different options because for him he's driving the scene and he he never did a scene and Ian was the same. They would never do it exactly the same each right. time. And what it would offer Peter is a whole lot of different options um, in the edit. But in the background, we just had, we just had to try and keep things the same. It's, Match um, it. Well, yeah, it's like, because, and those things really matter, uh, even if you're in the background and that's what an ensemble is about. You just, you just do like on a sports team, Mm -hmm. you might be the the hard grunt guys in the middle or the defense guys, or, you know, like in rugby, you're in the middle of the scrum or whatever. You just do your job and people might not even notice, but you just have, you just do your job. job, And yeah. yeah. So, uh, so what was your favorite scene? You know, we've talked a lot about the food scene in Bag End. What was your favorite one out of all of them to shoot? Oh, I think, well, our bagging was was good, and that the significance of that was that it was the first time we all got together, mm. um, and we're all in costumes, sort of a little bit disbelieving, really, that we're actually here and we're actually working, and we're actually doing this famous film. And then Ian walks in as Gandalf, and we're like, okay, it's just a, just got real, you know. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, the other one too that always gets mentioned, which was one of my favourite days, and there was a couple of days, was um, the barrel scene at the very end because that was when we were actually in the Polaris River um, where we got out of the barrels. Uh, and that was fun. That was just like an amusement park ride. And a lot <laughs> of the other stuff with the barrels was actually filmed in a studio. We were, you know, all the stuff we were going round and there was all the fighting. That was in a great big round. It was two V8 engines on either side, just right. just, just um, powering this huge, like like a go-kart track or like a, yeah. you know. Um, it's like a, it was all- a lazy <clears throat> river that's not so lazy. No, and he turned it up to eleven, and then and then then he had this big water thing that he just dump on someone, and that was like yeah, that created another effect. But in the actual river, um, we we actually I think we did that in the end of two thousand eleven, um, and yeah, but we didn't actually get to finish all of that because um, there was massive rains, and the, the, they we we were told by the police to, to to move, and then the whole river like rose a few meters. And so a hundred grand's worth of scaffolding just went phew, down the river. Um, I had an uncle at the end of the river in Blenheim and I, I should have called him and said, mate, if you want some cheap scaffolding, get down, get, <laughs> get to the mouth of the Polaris river, the river in about two hours and it's, it's all going to be there. So, um, so yeah, they, they lost a lot of that. And then we had to go back, I think in February the next year. And that's when we did all the running stuff. And yeah, okay. we, we finished off what, what, yeah. Cause we had to cut, cut that shoot short because there was just massive rains at the end of the year. Yeah. That was the end of our location shoot. Wow. Yeah, that was That's cool. Awesome. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. 
but the, I think, yeah, the barrels, that was universally a lot of fun. And I remember they were like these big, you know, like, you know, big wine barrels, but they had these big, like, tractor tyres inside them to keep mm-hmm. us afloat. And then I was looking down and there was bubbles coming up from mine. And I thought it might be one of the stunties, you know, they had, you know, with the aqua lungs down below. And I was like, I thought, no, my bloody thing's leaking. And it was, it was, it was, there was a hole in it. It didn't really matter. Yeah. Um, and of course, the other thing that we were told at the very end was like, when you get out of the barrels, you have to go out backwards. Cause if you go out forwards, you'll never get out. It's, you know, wow. it's, a, you know, and of course I decide to go out forwards. And so then I need three or four other guys to help me out. I completely blew it. I completely didn't follow instructions. Uh, I went out the wrong way. But as it so happened, they were filming that, and it actually made the movie because it was quite, it was quite humorous oh, that's hilarious. of them trying to pull me out forwards. Um, <laughs> you know, a couple of the guys that got through. I think John Callan and maybe William just escaped. You yeah. know that they went through. Um, at one stage, when Thorin was looking around for something, he hit a hole and he went straight down. And it was like, oh, we better, you know, then the, the stunties went him. and got him. So, <laughs> yeah. But it was it was a good day. It was just you know, dwarves and boats and floating down a river. It was it, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So where the the with all the prosthetics that you had as mm. bomber, you know, with the the massive stomach, mm. when that got wet, did that get heavier? Yeah, well, I didn't weigh myself, but um, I think my stunt guy Bronson weighed himself with all that stuff on out of the river, so mm-hmm. ringing wet, and he was about one hundred and eighty kilos. Which was well, I'm not one hundred percent sure on. The, I might have to Google the. Well, because well, I, I, I was I was looking at the at the temperature today because it's it was eight thirty in the morning it was twenty seven degrees which is about eighty degrees Fahrenheit, um so it's been it's pretty pretty hot here today, oh, um, um kilos in stone it's about it's about twenty eight stone. How many kilos did you say? Um, one hundred and eighty. Um, so it's about, about wow. twenty eight stone or pounds. that's almost four hundred pounds. About four hundred oh. pounds, yeah. Okay, yeah. it's yeah, it was massive. <laughs> <laughs> um and, and i remember one particular day i had to walk up the hill to lunch and it took me took four guys to get me onto my feet and then you know <laughs> it was just impossible i was like oh thanks Man. guys yeah so luckily there was still lunch when i got up there yeah luckily <laughs> well that's great well thank you so much for joining us today Stephen. um no worries my pleasure yeah i really really appreciate it again um where can people find your patreon uh, so, yeah, so it's uh, patreon.com slash Stephen Hunter, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, Steph Hen. That's uh, the one. So you can find it there. Or if you're after some acting stuff, it's the the Actors Coach um, on, on Patreon. I've also got a page on Jimmy um, and, you know, Cameo, Cameo, which has been crazy. Cameo went crazy all through the through the lockdown. So that, that's been good. I've been doing a few for Christmas as well. So Great. Well, yeah, guys, check him out on all of those. Um, I Like I said, I'm on... Uh, Patreon, so we can all hang out together next time Stephen does a Zoom. Um, so yeah, hit that up at patreon.com slash Stephen Hunter. Um, uh, guys, I'll be resuming my normal videos uh, probably this weekend, maybe early next week. We'll see how things shake out. I'm working on a long one right now. But um, Stephen, thank you again so much. And uh, no we'll see you all next time on Nerd of the Rings. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. <laughs>